In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to add an SSD to your Dell Optiplex 3020 SFF PC, which in this case I picked it up for an HTPC slash gaming PC build, so I really wanted to keep my optical drive instead of taking it out and using it as an SSD drive bay like most people do with these kinds of SSD upgrades. So I'll be showing you guys how exactly to do that without taking out your optical drive or hard drive for an SSD. And the SSD that I'm going to be using is going to be this Midas Force Super Lightning 120GB SATA SSD. It's a simple 2.5 inch SSD. It's actually the cheapest SSD that I could find new over here in Indonesia. And this is a really basic DRAMless SSD. It doesn't have any kind of mind-blowing performance, but that's not really what I need. I really need a cheap one because I'm trying to build a budget gaming PC and this will work just fine. Now, you also need this PCIe to SATA 6 gigabit per second uh, adapter. It's an expansion card that you slot into your PCIe slot. And because the motherboard has an extra PCIe 1X slot, this is perfect so that we can still plug in our optical drive bay or your hard drive into this if you want to. But yeah, this also comes with a half slot adapter so that you can put it into a tiny case just like the Dell Optiplex which uses half slot PCIe slots. And you also need this SATA power splitter which is just a Y cable that splits one SATA power connector to, into two so that you can power both your SSD and uh, hard drive through one SATA power connector because the Dell PC only has one SATA power connector available to it. So you really need this adapter so that you can run both the hard drive and SSD as well as the optical drive which has its own special SATA power connector which is not compatible with SSDs and hard drives. And lastly you also need the SATA data cable because they only include two in this PC, one for the optical drive and one for the original hard drive. So you definitely need a third one to connect your SSD. But in this case, I'll be using it for the optical drive while the SSD and hard drive is going to be connected to the motherboard using the original cables. So this is what you need. Basically, you need the SSD itself as well as the PCIe to SATA adapter as well as the SATA data cable and the SATA power Y adapter so that you can power both hard drives and SSDs together. And that's pretty much it. You don't need the optical drive to SSD drive bay adapter because that'll just take out their optical drive, which is not what I want to do here because this is going to be an HTPC. So the first thing to do is take out the screws in the back and they're capped the screws so you won't lose them and just set the panel aside for now. And as you can see right now, this is the bog standard Dell 3020 Optiplex PC, except for that I already added a GT1030, which you can see on the previous video. And if you're wondering about the tape as well, that's also in the previous video. Now you can see that the hard drive is under the optical drive and what you want to do is unplug all the cables first. So the power cable for the optical drive and then the SATA data cable for the optical drive. Then slide it backwards like that, just pull it from the tab and it should just come off because Dell basically made all of this toolless, which is pretty nice. Now you can see the hard drive there, which in this case, this is not actually the original hard drive because as you can see, there's the Apple logo. I actually took this off of an iMac and yeah, you got to take out the data and power cable as well, just like the optical drive. Then after you unclip the uh, the locking mechanism, then you can just move it upwards and tilt it up and just take it out. And as you can see, the hard drive is over here. It's a 3.5 inch hard drive. And this is just an old hard drive I had lying around. This PC didn't come with it when I bought it. But yeah, it's on this drive slot and usually you take it out and replace it with an SSD. But if you wanted to have an an SSD as well as a hard drive and while still keeping your optical drive bay then well this is the way and I'll show you how. So just leave the hard drive in there for now you don't need to take it out. So take your SSD and yeah well you can really set it aside for now. So what you need to do right now is just take out the SATA data cable from the motherboard and basically you have to swap the places of the shorter and longer ones later. So for now what you have to do is take the orange one, which is the shorter one, and plug it into the SATA 0 port, which is usually connected to your hard drive originally. So that's your first slot on the motherboard. And then you take your uh, hard drive cage and then position it to so that the latches hook up on top the way it is supposed to do in the first place. Then position your SSD just underneath the bay. And what you have to do is kind of snake the power cable for the SATA on the Y cable through the gap and connect it to your SSD. This way your SSD will just kind of lay underneath the original drive cage. It's really fine. There's extra space underneath it between the motherboard 
So all you're doing is kind of squeezing the cables slightly more, the cables that are going to the motherboard, which is not a big deal. Then you also got to connect the shorter cable onto the SSD as well, because it's going to be sitting close to the SSD to the motherboard. So you really just need the shorter one. And you have to connect the SATA data cable, which is the shorter one, in this case, the orange one, which was from the hard drive, I think, because it's a shorter one. But yeah, the SSD is now closer. So you want it to get plugged into the SSD and kind of line it up down there and line up the tabs on top. Then once you lined up the tabs on the hard drive cage, you just kind of make sure the cables don't get caught and lower it slightly and just push it down until it fits while making sure the cables don't get tangled underneath the drive cage. Now you want to also plug in the longer SATA cable that comes with your Dell first onto the second SATA port. And because you want to plug it in, you probably don't want to lock the hard drive bay first. Now, after you plug it into the second SATA port, then you can just route the cable upwards and away from the cage for now. Just make sure all the cables are, are plugged in tight for now. Just make sure they don't come off and just kind of push down the cage and just make sure it's tight and lock it into place. You shouldn't have to put much force into it because the SSD is not really blocking anything. You might have to put a bit more force because you're kind of squeezing the cables between the SSD and the cage, but it's not a big deal and you shouldn't have to put too much force. Now you just need to plug in the SATA data cable from the motherboard, the second one, with, which is the longer one that comes with your Dell, and also your SATA power cable from the Y splitter. The other one goes to the hard drive, while well, the other one goes to the SSD. So you have both powered up by one SATA connector, which then you could plug into your Dell. But for now, let's plug in the PCIe to SATA adapter, which you will plug into the PCIe 1X one, like one slot on your motherboard, which is above your graphics card slot on the PCIe 16X that I'm using for the GT1030. What you want to do is just open the tab on the back, then take out the original uh, back panel cover. Then just line it up to the PCIe 1X slot that's on the motherboard and you should be able to see it for yourself although it's kind of dark in my video. And just take the PCIe adapter card and plug it into the motherboard 1X slot and make sure there's no cables getting tangled underneath it and make sure it actually clicks in to place properly and after that's done you can actually just put in the optical drive bay first too. And you just close in the tab for the PCIe slot covers again to make sure they're tight. And that's it, it's all toolless. Even the optical drive bay, it's also toolless. You just push it forward and it'll click and it should stay in place. Now you can plug in the power cable for the SATA. So one of the ends of the SATA cable goes to the Y splitter. While the other end, which is a smaller one, that goes onto the optical drive bay, which is a special connector for the power. It's different from the hard drive and SSD. And finally, you can plug in your SATA data cable that you brought yourself into the adapter card on one end. And on the other end, after you route it around the case so that it doesn't get into any fans, you route it onto your optical drive bay connector. And that's basically it. You, once you've made sure you connected the hard drive and the SSD power and data cables as well as the optical drive bay power and data cables you should be all good now you just have to make sure that none of the fans contact the cables and make any noise because that would be bad if you stop a fan from spinning but that's pretty much it now all you have to do is just close the side panel and then we can move on to installing windows onto the SSD that is only if you don't have windows installed already or if you're wanting to do a clean install otherwise then you can just use the pc as is and you can pretty much detect the ssd right away in windows but if you want to get the full boot performance then you have to install windows using an external usb drive just plug it to the front here then power on the pc then on your keyboard press dell repeatedly until you see the dell loading logo and then press f12 which will bring up the menu and in this menu, then you can see that Dell will show a bunch of storage devices with legacy boot and UFI boot. And you want to choose your flash drive, which in my case is the SanDisk flash drive in the UFI menu. And then the flash drive should boot and try to get into the Windows install. It might take a second because it might be pretty slow from a flash drive. But yeah, once it's done, you can then start to click next on the first page, then click install now. 
And over here you can accept the license terms and click custom install and you can now see your hard drives and SSD. Now on drive zero, it should be your SSD. As you can see here, in my case, it's my 120 gigabyte SSD. It might have partitions. If it's a used SSD, then you can just use the delete function and delete everything until it says unallocated. But if it says unallocated, then you can just click next and start the Windows install on that SSD. Otherwise, you have to delete it and then click next onto it. But after you click next, then just wait for Windows to install. And once you get to Windows, then you can check if your hard drives and SSDs are actually installed. In this case, you should see the drive C, which is your SSD, and drive D, which is your hard drive, and as well as your optical drive bay as well. Now, if you don't have a CD on your optical drive yet, then it should not read anything, but you can test it out by pressing eject. And then it should actually eject the uh, optical drive bay once you click eject then you know it's actually working as i'll demonstrate over here so it's open right now after i click eject right now and if i close it back up and if i click eject again it should open it automatically there we go. So now we know it's actually working and it's communicating to the motherboard. And that should be good. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it useful and if you do like this video, please click the like button and maybe comment down below about your use case with this Dell Optiplex PC because it really is a pretty good budget PC. But yeah, if you also want to see more videos of this PC, maybe click the subscribe button to see me turn it into a gaming PC. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.